Startup and e-commerce financial model. Let's take a closer look at the components of CFI's e-commerce financial model. It starts with the business assumptions. These are the assumptions that we need to make to drive the business, including the three statements, the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, as well as supporting schedules that calculate things like depreciation and debt and interest. Then we go on to calculate customer metrics. These are very important for an e-commerce business, sometimes also called unit economics. From there, we can calculate a business valuation and determine what we think this company is worth. There are several purposes of this e-commerce financial model. One is to assess the economics of the e-commerce business. Another is to determine if a new business idea is viable. It can be used to value an online business, that is, determine the net present value using discounted cash flow analysis. It can also be used for internal budgeting and planning purposes for an FP&A team or an accounting team that needs to do their planning. In terms of relevant courses that will help you build this model, you can start with building a financial model in Excel, then take business valuation to learn discounted cash flow analysis, and then finally this e-commerce model will show you how to build every single calculation step by step. Let's flip over to the model now and take a closer look. Here we are on the cover page of the startup e-commerce financial model. Let's click through on the table of contents to the actual model itself. This is a single worksheet model. This is by far the simplest and most effective structure for the model. We can easily organize it by grouping cells and having all of these different sections. Let's open up the entire model to take a closer look. The assumptions that we start with for this e-commerce business are traffic, which is the monthly visits that the site generates. Then there's an applied conversion rate, which leads to orders. The orders then contain information such as how many items per order and the order value. We also have a table that models the customers and the churn rate. There are expenses, order fulfillment, GNA costs, etc. that are all assumptions hard-coded in blue. With all CFI models, any numbers that are in blue are hard-coded assumptions and anything that is in black is a formula or calculation. There are some balance sheet assumptions that need to be made related to working capital, capital expenditures, depreciation, etc. And then we get into the financial statements. So all of those assumptions above drive these financial statements here, including an income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow statement. But there are also some supporting schedules required. These reporting schedules include the capital assets, such as technology and property and equipment. There are then depreciation schedules. There's one for technology and one for property and equipment, as well as a simple debt schedule here. Below that, we get customer metrics. These are the main metrics that are used in e-commerce businesses. You need to know the customer acquisition cost, the contribution margin per order, the customer lifetime value or LTV, and then the ratio of LTV to customer acquisition cost. And we can also look at the payback in terms of the number of orders it takes to break even on acquiring a new customer. Beneath all of that, we have a valuation section where we calculate the unlevered free cash flow or free cash flow to the firm, calculate the net present value of the business, and look at the implied EV to revenue multiple on the valuation. Finally, as always, we cap off all CFI models with charts and graphs to illustrate what the model is telling us. So we can see here a breakdown of the income statement in the top left, the cash flow burn rate and cash balance in the top right. Bottom left, we have customer metrics and same on the bottom right as well. So there's a quick overview of this e-commerce model and what it contains. Let's take a closer look at some of the levers we can pull in making changes to the assumptions in this model. One thing is the site traffic. We may decide that this ramp up of traffic is too slow, that organic search is actually going to get to much higher monthly numbers much faster. That's where we could enter in these higher monthly numbers. So we could just override these with new assumptions, as you can see here. 
Additionally, we could tweak the conversion rates. If we think the conversion rates are too conservative, for example, that email will only be 6%, maybe it could get up to 8%, we can just go in and make these changes right on the fly. Average order value is assumed to be held flat over time, but we may think that price increases are warranted. And in fact, we could have it ramp up significantly depending on the profile of the product and the value add that's going to be created. So you would just go into the model like so and make changes to those assumptions. You could also edit the markdown or discounts and the product margin in terms of cost of goods sold. Churn rate, you could just edit in line right here. Now variable expenses, this is where there can be quite a bit of cost, especially on paid search. So here's the cost per click. As you can see, it's quite expensive, but it could become even more expensive over time. Who knows, maybe maybe five, six, and seven a click. And we could see what the economics look like in that scenario. We can scroll down to the income statement and have a look at the bottom line as well as the top line and see how these changes in assumptions are really impacting the business. As you can see, there's quite a big hockey stick at the end here where the forecast just massively ramps up and that's because we changed those assumptions. So maybe that's fine. We could scroll down to the valuation section as well and see what the impact is here on valuation. As you can see, the valuation in terms of the EV to revenue multiple went up significantly because of this enormous value that comes towards the end because we changed the assumptions. So you can see how making some simple changes to the assumptions can be very useful in evaluating different scenarios for this e-commerce business.